Hi, and welcome to the first question of paper one of the 2019 Maths uh, Leaving Cert Order Level. I'm just going to go through the set of notes here, and if anybody wants to have a look at the notes I'm using, just please send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. So question one here, part A, is a tax question. First part here is worth 10 marks, it's a big breakdown, it's a 10D scale. So we're hoping to get at least starting off the point here at three. So let's read through the question. Now I'd advise you to pause this and have a go at it yourself. And then if you can't get it, you can always look at the answer on the next page. So Emer earns a gross wage of 40 grand per annum with company A. Party then says she pays income tax at a rate of 20% on income up to the standard rate cutoff point of 23,300. 25, she pays tax at 40% on the rest. She gets a tax credit of 1,650. And you have to find out how much income tax she pays. So there's a number of calculations here. First one is finding out what's 20% of your 25,300. So that would get you definitely the three marks. Okay, maybe not higher. You're then looking at the difference. So 40,000, take away the 25,300. So what, roughly what, 47, okay, 4,700. You're looking at what's 20%, 40, 40% of that. And then the last point then, you're going to, whatever tax you owe from those two amounts being added together, you're going to take away your 1,650, job's done. So the question done out here, so I might as well use that. I've written out the statement to try and make sense of what's going on. Everybody, if they're paying tax, earns a certain amount of money and you pay tax based on how much you earn. Okay, Ireland has two bands. In the past, we've had more and other countries have different banding. But the basic idea is the more you earn, the more you pay. We all have generally a tax credit based on different criteria, married, whatever, single, you know, there's different criteria that, that decide that amount. That's the way it currently works. Now, there can be complexity with USC and other percentages, but this is fairly straightforward. So I've done here the tax at 20%. That's the same thing as the amount of earnings to so the standard cut-off point of 25,000. 300 by the 20 percent and the same thing multiplying by 0.2 i got 7060 on the calculator so that's the first amount then the remainder so the person earns 40 grand take away the 35,300 the remainder then is 47 and we got 40 percent of that so a good estimates roughly half that a little less i came out with 1880 so no red flags there Add those two numbers together, so I've done that over here, the 7,060 and the 1,880. And I got this number of 8,940. Now that's the tax you owe, but your tax credit gets taken away from that. So your tax credit is 1,650, so I've done that calculation down here. And then I got an answer of 7,290, which, you know, sounds like a lot, but um, it's within the ballpark, it's not a crazy amount. If you got a number that was like, massively low i mean people pay tax and complain so if you saw a number that was around what you earn you know you've done something majorly wrong at all points in any question like this you're trying to organize your work as much as possible so that there's a logical progression of thought and if you can get as many of those parts done as possible you're up here at the eight see if you don't make any errors of rounding or, or slips in your maths so make sure you use the calculator and if you have time double check each calculation kind of have a ballpark figure in your head so if you do go wrong something should trigger your trigger you to think look that number doesn't seem right let's just check throw the calculation to the calculator again now that's part a so 10 marks so we're more than a third of the way there now emer pays health insurance which costs her 1500 net okay so that's uh, the total amount of the health insurance find her annual income after paying income tax and health insurance now, this is fairly handy. It's worth five marks. The last part must be worth 10. So basically, she earns 40K. Okay, so 40K. I have it done on the next page. So I'm going to click on you can. You've taken away her income tax, which I think was 7290 or 72. Yeah, 7290. Okay. Because she owes that in, in tax. And she also owes the 1500 premium. That's your calculation. Okay, you can do it by hand if you want, but why would you bother? Okay, it's that calculation here. 
and I got it and came out with a figure of 31,210. You don't necessarily need to write out what's happening. Okay, I'm doing a sense there so I can use it for making this video. Um, but there, there is something to be said for organizing your thoughts and helping you make the best decision or coming up with the best problems of a method for any given question. So writing out, it helps you to focus your thoughts and then writing out what you have, don't have, and then plugging the numbers into the formula and then using the calculator or whatever to come to your calculation and making sure I always put in units, even if it's fairly obvious what the unit is. So that's part B, okay? So part C here now, part C, when I was going over this question before I made the video, puzzled me for a few minutes, okay? Um, I might be overthinking it, okay? And it is, I'd argue, more straightforward. So Ema is planning to change jobs. She's offered a company, or sorry, a job by another company called Company B, our original, with a gross wage of 38,000. So it's less. So um, she also gets a bonus of 1,500, okay, which is tax-free to, to her. So you don't pay tax on that. So technically her salary um, is, say, 39,500. Again, not all of that's going to be taxed. There's going to be a little bit of complexity there. Uh, which she would use to pay her health insurance. Okay, so her tax rates and credits would remain the same. Find by how much Emer's net annual income after paying income tax and health insurance will increase if she accepts the job at Company B. So you know what the amount is from Company A. Okay, we already calculated that in Part B. Okay, um, But remember, in Part B, she paid out for her health insurance. So the health insurance would have a cost of 1,500. Now in the bonus this for company B is giving, it would cost 1,500 and that would go straight to I suppose, paying off that, that, or paying that health insurance. So her salary in reality from part B was 1,500 higher. Um, so you can kind of ignore this 1,500 because if you're, if you were to, you could add it on to this part and then um, get her salary for company A with the 1500 added on or just you can ignore it so either way you do it it's going to be ultimately the same answer the same difference um, and that was where my brain got stuck so the, if you did make that error but you still did manage the calculations you're going to get up to at least the mid partial okay, or more likely the high partial if those calculations are done correctly you know what, if in an exam, unless you're going for an A or a 1, if you drop two marks here and there when there's particularly tricky questions, it's not the end of the world. Although, obviously, we're trying to get full marks in every part, if, if possible. So, I'll we'll go through it here. So, the company A income, as you said, was 31,210. Remember, that figure had the 1,500 taken off it. So, technically, you could add on the 1,500. but That would add just an extra layer of complexity. Company B income now, I've done that as a huge, big kind of calculation here. So there's 38,000 salary. Take away the tax at 20%. That would actually be the same as the answer in part A. Then the tax on the remainder. Now, this remainder is going to be different because in part A, they earn 40,000. So I think it was 4.7. Okay. In this case, they're earning 38,000 take away the, the cutoff point. So it's a smaller amount. And that's a tax at 40%. Then you're taking away the stand the um tax credit as well. Just like we did in part A, I'm just kind of putting into an Uber formula. Then I'm putting the numbers in. Okay, or doing plus actually I've done a few small calculations to simplify down. Technically, I could have programmed that in the calculator. Then I'll straight to my answer of 31,510. So that's the income from company B. Now you're going to take them away. Now we were kind of told. Company B was going to be a higher income, so we should be expecting uh, that answer. So take away your company B income, take away company A income, and it is bigger, and I got an increase of just about 300. So working for company B will be slightly more financially rewarding for our email. And that's part C. Okay, so thanks, Wayne, and best of luck.